Stats not here. Welcome to an actor despairs. How are you doing? Hello, Ryan. Why did your voice all of a sudden? By the way, just just uh, for pre for pre context, we uh we had a fantastic conversation. I, I know, dude. I should have recorded we even this. Started recording, Ryan. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. My fault, dude. You're a legend. I've is. enjoyed talking yeah, with pleasure, you so man. much. To be here. I guess you can count this as we've had a pre-interview and a good bro down. But, dude, it is a pleasure Absolutely. and an honor. I feel like now we have a rapport. Yeah. We have a rapport. Oh, bless you, man. Thank you. It's 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 it's, it's just a, it's an honor back just to sit down and have a conversation with a fellow thespian. And, and you know, this is actually my first uh acting related podcast so i'm just really looking forward to sitting down and having a genuine conversation with you man rebel moon game of thrones <laughs> supergirl you're carving out such an amazing path and as a man uh i don't drink and i only say that or or do drugs yeah. that i have found fitness is my is my passion a way of of being addicted to something now but you're in impeccable shape and you're hell of a good looking man so i'm yeah. really excited to get to talk to you oh thank you Thank you, thank you. That was uh, that was so charming. I feel like I should buy you a drink now. It's 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 all good. Maybe maybe when you come to New York for some project, we'll absolutely. Do that. Love but that. Uh, where Love did that. you grow up? Oh man, um, I I grew up in a lot of places, right? Um, I am Russian Indian by descent, so wow. spent but but actually left Russia when I was two years old. Uh, lived in the UK, Soviet for about Union, five, or, six, or Russia. I. I Actually, was born two months before the Soviet Union fell uh, fell apart in 1991. Some may say that it happened because of my birth, <laughs> but I that's that's up to interpretation. That might be interpretation, but uh, but no, I left uh, I left it too, uh, and spent uh, three to five years in the UK, and then I actually lived in Cincinnati for for two months for two years, wow. really enough, and then wow. moved back. Then lived in Portugal, then lived in a boarding school. I, it's a really, you know, it's the reason I just started rambling there is because when someone asks you where you're from, it's such a tough question to answer, right? It's does where you're from stand for where you were born? Does it yeah. stand for the culture you were raised into? You know, um, and for me, it's kind of a real mix. You know, I, I I spent most of my life in the UK, most of my young adult life in the UK. So I would, you know, if someone to ask me where I was from, I would say Russian Indian, but raised by the British. Wow. So a, a true citizen of the world with multicultural yeah. amalgamation of so many different, like we were speaking earlier about cosmopolitan and, and we're real, yeah. real different ethos of so many different countries and different blends. That's, yeah. that's awesome. I'm I'm curious, you know, because, you know, both of us are actors. How did this bug happen for you? Are your parents artists? That's a good question. Um, my mother was always creative. My, my mother is, is, uh, is, was a pianist. Uh, and so there was always kind of creativity in the house. Um, and I think that definitely was the, the biggest catalyst for me, uh, at least. And, but uh, I, I don't know whether it was my ADHD or just me as a person, my, my, my way of viewing the world or existing within it. But as a kid, I didn't really have toys. I, I, I would create characters. I would play the piano. I would draw. I just, I think creative outlets were always kind of innately a part of my process, even as a child. And as an adult, I found a lot of positive catharsis and escapism. And, you know, as a young adult in my teens, you know, uh, through through music, through acting, and through through the arts. And um, I always say, you know, it. I was very lucky because I always knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to create, express, perform. You know, I didn't know specifically as a kid under what guise, under what kind of paradigm, whether it be music or writing or acting. Or, but the, the, the need for expression was always very, very kind of um, prevalent in, in, in me, as cliche as that sounds. No, that's that's beautiful. And then did you play piano or any instruments yourself? Or Yeah. Yeah, I played the piano myself. I still write and compose on the piano myself. I mean, albeit terribly relative to some of my brilliant friends, but but enough, but enough to get get the idea on paper and 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 um, yeah. No, I I I, I always say that I, I look at acting and music as my two children that I love equally and but very differently. You know, yeah. if you have, I imagine if I had a daughter and a son, I would love them equally the same but in very different ways. And that's kind of how I look at those two mediums. Uh, for myself, both as a spectator and as a participator, and 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 you know, obviously, you were moving around the world quite a lot. But you know, being in the UK, 
Did you mm-hmm. have an exposure to a lot of the arts there, both in theater, you know, and, and all the wonderful Yeah, I things? mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm, I started back. Back in the day, I mean, when I when I first I first got into acting in terms of you know when I when I first got back into acting, so I got into acting. Um, it was it was in the UK. I was very young. Actually, I have my mother to thank for this again. I, I think I was always had a lot of energy and a lot of output <laughs> that needed exhausting, and my mum used that as an opportunity to put me into dancing and acting, and so I I actually started in the West End, so the British Broadway. No uh, doing uh, an inspector call, which is an old, an old theatre piece. I, 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 I again try to remember the, the who, who wrote it, but and um, yeah, and so I, I started quite young. I actually got fired from an inspector calls no at way. eight years old because at the encore, a lady waved, and I thought it prudent to wink at her. And obviously, the West End will have none of that. Wait, wait, can you, for, for the American audience, can you explain that? That makes no sense. Okay, so, okay, so, 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 uh, the West End is Broadway. It's this, it's this, it's, it's our version. Yeah, totally, you know, I get that uh, for sure, yeah. yeah. So, 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 so beyond that, at the end of the show, we all take a bow, right? When yeah. we take the bow, I had this lady screaming, waving and looking at me, and I, eight years old, never done this before, you know, totally overwhelmed by the whole experience in a good way. I look and I wink at her. And uh, ended up, uh, you know, getting um, getting canned for that. Or I was t- terrible. Who knows? I was a child. But uh, but suffice it to say, uh, after uh, after uh, after a few shows, I, I got canned. That's know, appalling, man! You know, I can't. I'm outraged. We got to no, look up these it's, producers. It is don't be outraged, Ryan. Rejection, <laughs> yeah. rejection is rejection is a is a big part of our big part of our career and our and, and our trajectory and our journey as actors. So yeah, you know, it was I got I got I got taught that young. But um but yeah so I started off doing that and I I, I was I was kind of I was acting as a kid up until about 10, 11 years old. And I think it just started um I guess I imagine a single mother from from pre-Soviet Russia coming to the UK trying to give us a better life, yeah. and uh, she ends up, uh, you know, having a child who's spending from seven to eleven PM every night trying to be in theatres. I think she was just worried about my future, rightfully so, and you know what that meant. And 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 so uh, I actually stopped acting as a kid at eleven, and then uh, didn't go back to it till I was twenty-one. I then did music for nine years professionally, but, uh, but I I took a uh, break too. I'm so glad to talk to someone who's, you know, done the same thing as me because I find that hard to find anyone that's had that experience and talk to me about that. Then when, when you did that, is it true that you formed a band? Yeah, no. Yeah. I was in, I was in a band with my now brother, uh, my, you know, my adopted father who raised me from 16 till, I mean, till, to this day, but, uh, but yeah, I was in a band for about seven, eight years. It was a boy band. Suffice you it to you say. were on, on the uh, X Factor, was, right? Please don't judge me. I mean, <laughs> yes, <laughs> all, yes, no, we, you know, they yeah. tried three years to get us on that show. They tried to get us on that show for. And, um, you know, it's a weird thing, right? I mean, ultimately, business and creativity have to marry to make a product. And that's, that's a sad reality. But, um, but you know, literally, uh, it was reality a very, it was tell, a, you know, I know those are not real yeah, so to speak base, it's, it's, yeah 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 it's, it's all on another, on another scale but yeah i mean i for seven eight years i was uh, a co-writer and a singer in a band and we eventually got to a kind of sound that i think we could we could say we were proud of but um you know what i can say to now and to the process as an actor it definitely informed a lot in terms of the need to hone your craft the the trial and error that inevitably goes into being great at what you do or even striving to be great at what you do. And, um, and I think, you know, part of the reason I dove straight back, dived straight back into um, acting after the band was starting to break up was because I realized what I love the most is being a part of something. There's something beautiful about being a cog in the machine. And I don't mean the machine in an industrialized way. I mean, a creative machine, the, yeah. the entity, let's call it. Sounds way more cool to call it the entity or something. But the creative entity that we create together and then it's and I think, you know, when we broke up as a band, I kind of looked at it and went, well, I, uh, I looked at it as kind of a, I, I think the idea of going solo with this myself was, was not only scary, but that isn't why I got into artistry before. There isn't, 
a sustainable way for me to be an artist. I think what I love about acting is that you are one part of a beautiful whole. Yeah. You know, you have a collective of actors, AD, crew, DOPs, cameramen, the director. There's this beautiful marriage of everyone's ideas and it's just, it's so collaborative. And I think when I when we broke up as a band, I was like, I, I can't imagine it being as fun and collaborative. It's, the journey isn't as fun if it's not shared. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's kind of what I got me back into got me back into uh acting at 21 22 and here we are i mean there's i can go into all the semantics yeah. training all that stuff but that, that we can we can we can we can we can if that comes up again we'll just... no no i mean what what was the process for you to reacclimate back in did you go to uh did you go to a drama school drama program did, or you know i did not I, I i did two and a half years as a kid at drama school and no you know um i have no uh no stigma against drama schools. You know, I have, I have, I have friends of mine who've done very well under them and friends of mine who have, who, who have, who have come out and felt like they had to undo after going to certain schools, being under certain people's tutelage. Right. But what I would say is I was very lucky. I, I whether it's a combination of me being uh, the way I am, my experiences coupled with my experience as a kid as in, in acting and in, and in, in, in the craft. Um, I, I, I was lucky. I started working after, you know, a year of just training under various teachers. Um, and that being said, though, I mean, I still to this day have have an have acting coaches I work with, and yeah. you know, I, I I I actually find that since I've become a working actor, I have done recently way more work on becoming a proficient and 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 I don't want to trained is the wrong word, but adept. Yeah. Or 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 diligent kind of in my process far more now as a working actor than I was I think in my young adulthood when I was kind of dipping my toe back in the water. And and uh when when you started to get back in, you know, were you kind of thrown in for a lot of film and TV auditions or was it right back for theater? Yeah. No, I I I as soon as I started, went in as an adult, you know, aesthetic plays a massive role in where and where people think to put us or or decide to put us. And I, I was very lucky, you know, I, I went straight into TV and film, you know, albeit all different sizes and scales. It wasn't like Game of Thrones, here you go. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I'd been I had been auditioning for, for four and a half years and actually got close to another role on Thrones two years before, uh, which obviously I think built a nice relationship with uh, Robert Stern. The actor, wonderful man at uh, at, uh, at uh, HBO and on, and on Thrones, uh, and got me the the role that I got eventually. But um, uh, but yeah, no, it was. It's, I've 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 mainly always gone up for TV and film. Not to say I would love to go back into theatre. Uh, yeah. I'm just still terrified of going absolutely broke again. So I, you know, it's nice to go up for roles where that that pay the bills. I understand and believe me, I identify, especially in America, it's it's very similar here. And, you know, so as you started to garner credits again, did you feel like, you know, perhaps since you hadn't really visited it for so long, almost 10 years, that you had to kind of refine or retrain your your voice and your 100%, identity? 100%, 100%, man. And I think beyond my voice and my identity, it was just, I think, uh, the, the beautiful thing about artistry is that it's never ending. You know, we can always find a way to understand ourselves better, the human condition better, the psychology of what it is to be human better, which inevitably makes us more proficient at our job. And I remember at first when I was 22, 23, 24, getting into it, I, I felt this level of kind of like, what's the word? I, like I, I, false comfort. I was like, oh, it'll all be fine. You know, I, I can ride on my my traumatic childhood or ride on my experience as a kid actor and and as i started delving more into it, i realized if i really wanted to be an artist i had to understand the process and the childhood relations and that comes with always wanting to hone your craft i think the people that are great at what they do never lose the humility necessary to become greater to become better and um I really found that once I was fortunate enough to work on Thrones which in itself was a learning and, and learning for 11 field. episodes you know yeah 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 and also I like to talk and this guy said next to nothing so learning to exist and exist wholeheartedly in these worlds yeah. you know fully uh was was a lesson in itself but 100% Ryan I I 
the more I was fortunate enough to get these 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 glimpses into my industry, the more I realized how hard I had to work to deserve the opportunities I was getting. Because uh, statistically speaking, I think if I'm not mistaken, there's 69 odd, 68 million actors on IMDb. Wow, uh, I did not uh, know, you know that. So to be a, yeah, yeah, so roughly, and to be a working actor, you sit in the top 15 to 50,000, which is putting you in the top 0.001 percentile. You know, you're 0.01. I think it's 0.001, if I'm not mistaken. My math is terrible, but, yeah. you know, the odds of being a working actor are, are miraculous, to say the least. So um, when I was fortunate enough to start working, it really made me double down on on honing the craft and, and, and making sure that I was I was, I was was pulling things off as truthfully and as well well-roundedly as possible. And was it amazing to be exposed to that level of just sheer production design scale? Hundred percent. I would. I would argue. I would argue. I've learned just as much being in the field, which is a paradox, right? Because how do you learn in the field? Or like, yeah, you know, to learn in the field. But you know, at least for myself, I, I was fortunate enough after three or four years to, to book some of these really, really wonderful jobs, and sometimes sporadically, you know. Yeah. Um. But 100%, you know, getting to see how other people work, how people uh, operate in these higher, you know, these, 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 these bigger productions and just getting to see people really work well. I, I find that what I learned the best is the key is to how to get out your own way, yeah. you know, and then people learn that in different ways where that some, some people are lucky, like Depp, when it's like their life experiences, whatever, or Bale, who just, you know, who obviously have a ridiculous work ethic but had no classical or formal training. Yeah. Some people need to be push to the brink to find their vulnerability but it's you know the end game when i look at people who are really great it's people who are completely carefree and completely you know they, they've understood the character enough where they can they can they can just exist well enough to 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 give something that is completely free of the fear of being judged or completely free of other people's opinions and it's that's that that carelessness and that carefreeness is is a skill that you know takes years to 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 to, to harness did you learn a lot as well by watching Amelia, you know, being such close proximity? Oh, or... man, Amelia was yeah. cool, man. I mean, listen, what I, what I learned from Amelia was like, you can be, you know, top, 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 uh, you know, top, top of, top of the ring, ring top of the, top of the rung. Yeah. I forget the saying, Scott, uh, but top, top of the, top of the pedestal. And you can still be awesome and super down to earth, super cool. Like, you know, she's fantastic at her job. You know what I mean, but that's you know that that should you know hopefully that should be the shouldn't be the benchmark. You know, people should be good at what they do. They should yeah, no, work hard to be great. You know, um, and uh, but, but beyond her being great, sorry, beyond her being great at her job, she was just very very cool, very down to earth. She she could see I was nervous. This was a big job for me, and she she took the time to kind of make it feel very relaxed. It kind of she's very girl next door kind of just just really cool, really cool individual. That's uh, you know what I say. But beyond her, you know, Peter was just a masterclass every moment yeah. just how he how he how he how he how he, his work his work ethic how he was they, they were and there's just there's so many examples of great people i mean lena who played cersei she yeah she gave me her home in los angeles when i had no money and i needed to be there for three months you know she was like i'm not there here are my keys that's so you know, funny because so... her, her her husband who did the podcast mm -hmm. he offered me his home in Brooklyn, here, you know, after yeah. doing the podcast, yeah, yeah, that, that's, what they, that, that's, that's yeah. what they like. They're, they're, yeah. amazing, they're amazing individuals, amazing yeah. individuals. Uh, and uh, but yeah, no, it was it was a masterclass, not just acting, but just also, you know, they those that so many of them are family driven. You know, it was just nice to see that there is, you know, a, a world where you can be great at what you do and do well, and also focus on the things that matter most family, you know, the ability of those things. And now I feel like I'm Miss South Carolina giving no, a speech, but no, I do mean what I said. That's that's beautiful. You're you're Miss you're Miss New York at that. It was very well put in. And I'm curious then, you, you know, man. obviously that that show, you know, especially coming out of this 2023 nightmare strike consolidation. Yeah. No more yeah. spending, you know, we got to make bad stuff because that makes money, but it doesn't make money. So we're going to yeah. make more being in something that iconic and that great. That was so great, you know, for as long as it was, no matter what you feel about the ending, that must have exposed you to not just an American audience, but a global scale. Then I imagine were you pretty strategic at that point about getting American representation if you didn't have it already? 
you know, you know um, what I will say, it definitely, and I agree with you, it, it definitely opened a lot of doors. But I think what it did more than anything was was allow me to be taken a little seriously. You know, it, it's yeah. it's hard sometimes when you're coming in as a young adult and you look a certain way and then and, and people, you know, people people make assumptions like they do of any type of person. Well, you're, you're but, a beautiful you know, man uh, and you're in incredible model. shape. And I imagine, you know, there, yeah. There's, yeah. there's a, there's there's a lot of hate but, that, that you can get for that. You know, it, it's a blessing, but it can be a curse yeah, too. I, I don't know. It, 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 I didn't even say it's a curse. It's just a level of misunderstanding, right? I, I think we get, we, we somehow separate intellect with aesthetic value. Yeah. And and when that happens, we somehow don't think that someone can be good at their job and look a certain way. And with women, even 10 times more than us. I mean, we, we're 10 times worse with, 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 with women. That's what Barbie was kind of about, right? The need for expectation. I mean, there's an expectation. There's a positive expectation and there's a negative expectation. The negative expectation is, oh, this guy's there because he's, he's resting with his laurels. He looked a certain way and he had the right connections or whatever. And and, and I'm not. And you're 100 anyway going Thank to you for defeat. saying that, honestly, because that is true, you know, 100%. The genetic factor. Yeah. And all also, of a sudden, I'm, I'm people. I'm also not stupid enough yeah. to say that. Yeah, just have that assumption. But I'm also not stupid enough to, to not, not uh, agree that they're right to an extent. People are gonna give me a opportunity in, a, in in a certain role because of the way I look. That's just that's just sadly the way the role the the industry works. We're not judged on our merits. We're not judged on our just our credibility and our ability, which I believe should be the case. We are we are we are judged on a whole horde of things that business or the industry believes makes us sellable, makes us yeah. marketable, makes us whatever. Right. So, but be, be, be you know, um, I think my, going back to your question. What this did for me was just allow me to be taken seriously. You know, I, I, I the creative arts were were such a big escape and a positive escape for me, and a need for catharsis in some of the tougher points of my life as a child. And um, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't have existed without it. And there's a level of honor that comes from that perspective. And so it's it was just nice to people to start going, okay, you know, maybe this guy can actually act. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and and then did you at any point while after filming come to America, take some meetings or, you know, were you already at that point? Yeah, I, I, American I, auditions? Yeah, I mean, I I had an American manager. I actually went backwards. I had an American manager first through this was through word of mouth, through through a connection. And, you know, because I hadn't acted in 10 years, they were basically like, OK, well, we'll give you a shot. I was 22 at the time, I think. And they gave me like 15 auditions before they gave me an answer. It was like they just gave me tapes on tapes, two, one to three a week. And I'd tell them, oh, look, all right, good. And they'd give me more and more. And then they made a decision and were like, OK, yeah, cool, we'll go with you. You know, yeah. so it really was kind of quite a quite a grueling, kind of rigorous, but fun, actually, you know, yeah. um, experience. Because I didn't realize at this point that it was like, OK, it's either a yes or no. I thought they were like, okay, we we got you. We like you. Here's some auditions. Yeah. None of these auditions were real auditions. It was just them vetting me, essentially. Yeah. And uh, and so, yeah, I, I went with them first. And then I was just going up for roles that I wasn't ready for or I was really hard to get a visa for. And I, had I no understand. Experience, really. yeah. And so uh, my manager in America was like, let's get you in a British agent. So I got a British agent after about six months of being with my wonderful American manager circle of confusion and circle's um, great. I have a lot of friends. And yeah. There. Mm. And yeah, they, I love circle. They're fantastic. Never bullshitted me. We're always honest to me, you know? Um, yeah. They, 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 I'm, I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't speak more highly of, of wearing a McKenna and circle my, my, my reps, but, uh, but I, I had, I had already gone out to America for, for Rocky Horror Picture Show, which in itself was an interesting one. Um, because it was such an honor to remake the longest standing cinema cult classic. I mean, they still play in movies to this day, some 47, yeah. 48 years on. Bars too here 74. in New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So one honor, but, uh, you know, without never working for certain networks again, uh, I think the uh, people were more concerned about filling and enticing a younger demographic versus honoring something as cult classic as that but it was fun to fun i got to play rocky i was the you know the title star and and uh and i had a, I had a ton of fun and what it was such an eclectic and amazing cast and uh you know it wasn't it wasn't meant to be 
in terms of it wasn't meant to I guess I guess it wasn't in our in our in our on our cards to uh for it to be pulled off the way it deserved to be. But I had a ton of fun and everyone, you know, loved the network that took care of me, just which we made it less safe. Yeah. Well that's but yeah, that's that I was ready in America at my point. And 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 then at that point did you move here because you had a visa or no, I've, I've I've actually never lived in US permanently. I've wow. I've I've kind of come in for jobs. I have a visa. I can come in right now, you know. But uh, but uh, I like the separation, at least for myself, from not specifically the US, but you know, from from LA and from California. Although you know, the more I spend there, the more of a tribe I build there, and the more I have friends and people I call family now. So so I'm I'm it, that's readily changing. Yeah, uh, but yeah, no, I've always come in and out where I can. I like the separation. I, I, I think it's, you know, we get we get sometimes get very little downtime or way too much downtime. So I think where you spend <laughs> downtime is very important. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. You know, and, and we're then... somewhere we're not in, we're never in the middle. We're either too busy or too free, and 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 so finding a a, a place where you uh, feel safe in either circumstance. Uh, is is very conducive to sanity and happiness and general mental well being, and I found that in Portugal. So, and I'm glad you have that. And and how quickly then did did the audition for Supergirl happen? Because you've done, you know, I think yeah. like almost 40 episodes of that. Yeah, you know? you know what? Yeah, it's like 37 episodes. I look back, I'm like, where did all that fucking money go? Um, <laughs> but for the first time in my life, I had money, and I was like, oh yeah, of course, agent fees, taxes. Yeah, uh, me being terrible with money generally. But no, um, all jokes aside, uh, it was an interesting one because I, between season six and seven of Thrones, I lived in the, well, the British equivalent of the projects. I, you know, I had next to no money. Was that the I left home very young, or... so kind of become quite. No, that was, that was, uh, sorry, was that Wait, what? wait, because I know there's like the Cronks down in South London and then there's uh, Top Boy. It was actually Southwest. It's edge of Southwest London. But here's the thing. Do you know what's really funny? I, I I say it was like the projects, which it was. Yeah. But it was also like the projects in like the nicest area. I was very lucky. You know, there <laughs> yeah. was a park next to me. I could Sorry, walk, I'm not trying to expose walk, you, I could dude. walk my pit bull down <laughs> yeah. the Thames. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it yeah. was, I was, you know, I yeah. being, yes, yes. I, you know, I was living off of pennies a day. But uh, but I was very fortunate to be where, I, where I'm living, you know, and actually I, living in those places, I, I I felt a sense of community that I was absolutely lost in London, for example, when I was living in in the kind of the, the government housing places, I was I felt far safer and far more part of a community than I did living in many parts of London. So it was uh, it was wonderful. But point is, is, you know, a lot of people this is. The... You do a job like Game of Thrones. And whether it's you get paid well or, you know, things come up straight away, they they, they, they don't, you know, you uh, you sometimes get really handsomely paid for three weeks or four weeks, but then you've got 50, 50 weeks to then spend it, you know? So, uh, so, so, so it was um, very much a learning curve, I think for myself and a, a humbling curve, a necessary humbling curve to be like, okay, you know, you know, uh, you are, you are the, the, the standard of a production and the money it makes versus the standard, uh, that you should expect yourself to be at, and the money you make it are very different. You know, you can be on the biggest job in the world and make next to no money, or or not get another audition, or not get a, another job at least. You know, for um for for months. But and, uh, and what years I saying, now, even with the strike, for years, some man. yeah, for yeah. sure with the strike, yeah. I know so many yeah. brilliantly talented and also established actors. Yeah, who who didn't work at all over this period of time. But you know, for me, it was very humbling and very very important to. To, to 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 learn that because it meant okay what am I in control of I'm not in control of when I work even if I do the biggest TV show in the world that's not that's out of my hands what I'm in control of is my work ethic what I'm in control of is my ability to be as present and as ready for any job that comes my way and that's not just by honing the craft that's also by honing being a human being whether that's going to therapy or finding things that really give you presence or a sense of joy with no money you know these all these things I think Alan Rickman said something along these lines after I, you know, I'm not stealing this from him. I'm saying he said something similar. He was like, you know, to be a great actor is is, is not just to, to to study your craft. It is to study the, what it is to be a human being and yeah. live in the world, read books, watch people, listen to music, you know, just connect to 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 artistry at its core, at its foundational concept. And, and uh, that was very much the time for me to do that. And it, it served a fantastic purpose 
uh, instead of it being like, okay, Game of Thrones, next big thing. You know, well, I, I really went back to this being studious, studious, sorry. And, and, but I imagine, you know, for, for you as an actor, it must have been challenging to go from such a deep, dark, gritty show to, to Super Goral, where it's more of like a brand, yeah. awareness, you know, conservative. Yeah, no, it was, man. It was. You still yeah. action, but very different how it's yeah. how it's portrayed. Very different ball game. All of a sudden, you're filming, you know, 50 pages, 55 pages in a week to 10 days. Would you do you an know, episode a to, week or... Yeah, roughly give or take yeah. an episode a week. An episode, we would probably have pick up, probably have pick up on the, on the second week, you know, in between shooting the next episode. But it was very much like a, you know, it's a conveyor belt, right? We're trying to, you're trying to get its content. It's, content. it's network, and, yeah. Um, yeah, it's network. And do you know what? It was a really interesting thing. I, I have so much love for CW. A, it allows you to cut your teeth. You're doing content over content. It allows you to play around, you know, and not in terms of like. You don't have a lot of freedom creatively, but you have so much work to pull off, you know, uh, that, uh, that there's there's the opportunity to learn, to create, to, to discover, to, you know, but. um, And that's Vancouver, right? For the audience. Yeah, that was Vancouver. Yeah. 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 And which was the, which was one of the nicest things about it. I mean, Vancouver is a big, big fan of Vancouver. If any actor or any person is, is fortunate enough to go to Vancouver, uh, make the most of it. It's a great place. But it was, it was definitely a very interesting thing because as someone who tries to be a stickler or tries to understand and the, the structure of things, you know, with, with shows like CW as an actor, you know, you create, you think of the over, over ending arc of the story, over ending arc of yourself throughout a season over and, and, and then the small arcs within scenes within moments. And, you know, we would film 50, 60 pages and then 15 to 20 of those pages will be cut out. Right. So, all of us, and, and they wouldn't be, they wouldn't be whole pages or whole scenes. There'll be snippets here, moments here. So you see these kind of, it was, it was, it was a lesson, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say, in understanding the different mediums, you know, and the different, the, the different types of productions and how they work and what they prioritize. And it was a very, very, um, again, humbling experience. To, to 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 look at it and go, okay, well, this is what I make, and then the end product is going to look nothing like that, and there's nothing I can do about that. Yeah, you know, um, you know, it goes through the the lens of the director, the producers, the editor, of course, and they have a, you know, a a, a deadline. They have to make forty pages. Yeah, they basically 41, 45 yeah, pages with commercial make 40, breaks. Minute, you know, forty four minute episode with commercial breaks and all that stuff. So, you know, you're filming essentially 10, 15 pages that you know are going to get scrapped. And that was that was very interesting. But tedious, the work experience is I wonderful. imagine. You know, right. they, tedious and frustrating creatively. But again, this is this is something that I think is sensible for any actor to learn, which is like learn to let go of the things that are totally fucking out of your control. Look, there there is something to be said. I remember sitting with David Hare with uh, one of my favorite actors, he played Captain Poison in, in, in Blood Diamond, which was one of my favorite movies. And, you know, he's, he was the first black male to play Othello, even though he was black, uh, you know, or a more at least. Um, amazing actor. And Yeah, amazing actor, phenomenal actor. And I remember talking to him about him. I was like, I thought we, we hung out one weekend and we sat and watched some UFC. I was like, and had a conversation first and foremost, and he said, look, you know, this is, this is partially something that you cannot change, nothing you can do about. This is just the nature of this kind of, this this style of production that you're in but he says what i what i would do when you know so much is being cut and you know it's all changing learn how to make the most of the smallest things if you if you if you if you if, you, if there's something in the script that doesn't feel worthwhile or doesn't feel as interesting as it should be make it interesting don't rely on the writing don't rely on the fact that it's definitely going to be in the in the cuts to 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 let it, don't allow that. Sorry to um to not make the most of every, every every opportunity you have to do something great. And it was it was really wonderful because you know now I can I can tell the difference between really great writing and writing that is feeding a demographic, and you know and and it allows me to constantly search for new ways to play things or create yeah. things or how to make things more interesting or at least more honest to myself. So yeah, I really well, enjoyed the process and. It perhaps you know dare i say how to make writing that's not necessarily the most you know 
Game of Thrones dark edgy, but still bring it equal yeah. life and give the same kind of yeah. quality yeah. performance, you know? Yeah, and, and and exactly that. And 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 that is that 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 is all up to you. You know, you can create a, a rich and powerful inner world. You know, you could you can give every 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 word and every every thought meaning, you know what I mean. You can you can raise the stakes even if they don't feel like they have to be. You can you can find moments of real honesty or, or conflict or there's 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 always something that can be done, and that's kind of what I think I learned on on, on Supergirl. And the cast are just lovely, just really good, nice, hardworking, talented people. The production really took care of us always. You know, I can never speak evil of Supergirl. You know? That's amazing to hear. And I imagine, you know, I, I'm curious for you because I do want to ask you about it as someone who finds physical fitness to be imperative in their life, particularly because as my audience knows, I, I, I don't drink or do drugs anymore. But for you, is that something that always came natural to you or that you just kind of started you doing know, because of Game of Thrones or, you, you know, no, where you know, Ryan, I, would, I, I am innately lazy when it comes to physical physical actually no that's a lie i'm in it lazy when it comes to training uh but i from the age of 16 and 20 to 20 like 122 i was obsessed with it i think partly it was a way of becoming a man in my head you know it was uh i was around i was in the band at the time and the guys were five six years older than me so they were they felt like men and i felt like a boy you know so there was this kind of need to rise to the occasion but I think naturally speaking, I, I would rather get my fitness from martial arts, from going on a hike, from taking a walk, for you know, from rock climbing, you know, although I do none of these things at the moment, way too busy and, and apparently way too stressed. I'm not sure if I'm telling the truth. I might be lying to myself. But um training when it comes to the gym, it's 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 now it's become now it's become I've kind of flipped. Now it's become what's the word I'm looking for? It's transactional is the complete honest truth. I keep myself in shape. I don't, you know, I, I still got like two out of the eight abs I had. Because you, uh, they're laser cut, dude. For you, I mean, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, but you know? just, 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 just so you understand, like there, I had a world-class, you know, world champion trainer. Yeah. I had a chef that would bring me food every day. I had everything done for me. All I had to do was turn up and work my ass off. Like, did did you know Snyder at this point? Did he know your work or? Oh was yeah, it absolutely. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely. I mean, me when I was living on my friend's floor for five or six months, me and my two closest friends we called ourselves the Spartans, you know, because it was the few against the many, achieving the impossible. You know, these the, the all these wonderful cliches that get us through the dark times, and are absolutely cliches for a reason. And so we call ourselves the Spartans. So I mean, I, I'm from from Sucker Punch to 300 to actually uh, Dawn of the Dead that I just watched wow. with the wife last week. You know, she hadn't seen it. Uh, you know, I've a Watchman. I've I've always been a fan of him, as divisive as some people may see him. I've, uh, I've no, yeah, I, I, I'm a huge fan, and, and I know he's I, such a great guy. Oh, he's a fantastic man. He, he's, you know, his, you know, his, his wife also is always there. She's, she's, she's her EP. She's not just his wife. She is a phenomenal powerhouse and, uh, you know, absolutely uh, the spearhead in many ways. I'm sure he'd say the same of, of what makes him the greatest he is. And they're just an amazing team and they're family driven. And, you know, he's, he again is an example of, of success in the real, in the wealth and in the, in the, in the real sense, not wealth, financial wealth, but true wealth, which is, you know, uh, a feeling of 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 content and family and and real um I don't know that's that 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 to me is when I think of wealth I think of myself being healthy you know surrounded by by loads of family and love and dogs and which he has all of you know and six kids you know he's he's uh yeah I, I think he's cracked the code when it comes to when it comes to life how did it come your way uh Rebel Moon was it an audition I was just lucky enough. I was just lucky enough to get the audition, right? You know, um, I, I, you know, I was, I was filming another movie that hasn't come out yet with Paul Bettany, legend, uh, doing actually a COVID comedy with him, which is probably why we haven't released it with Miramax. But a uh, really, really cool production, actually. And I was, I was filming that and got the opportunity, and it just, it just went well. I just, I just, I felt like I understood the character, and I think that helped. Always for Tarek. you know. Yeah. Right? Yeah, for Tarek, yeah, yeah, exactly that. Um, I just, there was, there was this, although he's very different to myself, I'm quite, ah, and loud, and, you know, I'm, I like to say, I come to people, whereas Tarek 
people come to Tarek. You know, yeah. he's he's uh, he lets the world come to him versus vice versa, which is me. Um, but I just I don't know. I, I just felt like I understood him. And when I spoke with Zach for the for the second audition, it was you know for the final audition. Oh, the um, second was the final. It was literally yeah, first. And, yeah, wow. Was, was, Look at you, yeah, dude. Was, <laughs> listen, and that just that's not usually the case. Usually, you know, it's it's two to five, two to four auditions. You know, it's um. This is just. I think this just one. This one makes sense. I remember. I remember when I did the first audition. I then spoke to when I got the the, the director meeting with Zach. I spoke to one of my acting coaches, a wonderful man, Ben Woodall. Um, he um. And he said, "Look, show me your tape." And I showed him a tape. And you know, me and him, we we've known each other years. And we it's more it's as much a meeting of the minds and peers talking and fine tuning as much as I am his student and 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 I learn a lot from him, which I do. But he he watched it. and He was like, "I've I've just just keep doing what you're doing. I don't I don't I don't even want to I don't want to get involved here." He said. So I just think this 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 guy I I I understood him and um and I connected to him. You know, I just I lucked out, man. Like like you know like it's it. How many talented, brilliant actors do you know that don't get a look in, that don't get a chance? You know, it's there's so many factors that come into becoming a successful actor, which I'm still working towards. But this being such a big, big shift and a big, yeah. big opportunity. Congratulations and, and big again thing. on this. This Thank is you, such, such a wonderful achievement. And and Thank so you. I've went, this audition just so for the audience. When is this pre-pandemic? Mm -hmm. The audition. This was this is post-pandemic. No, this was this. So was, well, no, this was during pandemic. I mean, wow, really, this was this would have been October 2022, baby. Okay, so not yeah, even that long. Ago. So, wow, would have October, no, 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 October, November 2022, uh, was the final audition. And then I remember leaving that, and I'm, I'm, I'm wickedly like many of us I have an imposter syndrome, and I'm certain someone's going to tap me on the shoulder and tell me I'm not meant to be here. But, uh, I remember this being the audition coming up, being like, actually, this. This actually felt good. I, I I felt like me and me and Zach, you know. I remember telling to him regard telling him regarding the bird. I was basically said, you know, I felt like the relationship with the bird was as much a relationship with himself, and that what he was saying to the bird, he was more saying to himself. This was a moment for redemption and freedom. And sure enough, I was right because all I got with it was that scene. And yeah, I just think that really that really helped to the read. But yeah, we did the audition October November twenty twenty two. And I got the news December the fourteenth, I believe. Wow, twenty twenty. I, I I just remember the moment. Yeah. So so twenty twenty three was actually a good year for you then. For me, twenty twenty three was 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 a spectacular year. I I, I my wife late twenty twenty two. I fell in love twenty twenty three three. Uh, got married twenty twenty three. Wow. And uh, yeah, so it's it's. I was I was I was very lucky. I've always. Always, I, I, I always had this I had this um, kind of storm before the calm or calm before the storm kind of thing. Whenever whenever things go terribly wrong for me in many ways, it's it's always turned out that somewhere around around the corner. I think with a lot of us, there's there's a moment of hope and yeah. a moment of opportunity. And and I was very lucky that that was was kind of uh, found in, in my now wife and this this awesome opportunity getting to play a a bird master. And and given the scale of this project, I imagine you had a quite intensive pre-production process. Yeah, no, it was two months of of caloric deficit training, five to six days a week. Um, Where did you guys you know, film? We, were, we filmed mainly in uh, Santa Clarita for the second half, and then okay. I think probably two uh, probably a third of it were were inserts in a studio. Okay, but um, but really cool because as, as as I'm sure you know, like Zach really builds out these worlds practically and physically. So yeah, and you got to reunite whilst, with so many Game you know, of Thrones so much together, alumni. I know. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Did you guys talk about that? that? You know, I, I have to ask. Dario Nahara yeah. No, guys... no one. No, this wasn't like a. This isn't. This isn't like a. You know, Zach is secretly obsessed with Dario Nahara and, and and Game of Thrones. I just just for whatever reason. That uh, that ended up happening. I mean, I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's uh, it's a weird Easter egg for the Game of Thrones fans. I am sure they have to have a photo together at this point. You know, laughing about it. Oh yeah, for sure. yeah. Oh for yeah. sure, for sure. We, we yeah. during the press tour, we, they, they, I'm sure they had a laugh about it. Yeah, that's hilarious. And and then you know, I mean, working with Sophia, Charlie, and everyone mm -hmm. else, I imagine you know everyone was probably you. You guys had to choreograph, I imagine, quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, no. Again, they were 
I mean, the, the stunt team were amazing, you know. Uh, was it you mostly Chris as Bauer. much as you could be? Yeah. Um, yes, 90 something percent of that was me. Wow. So I think I think there's maybe one stunt or maybe two. I think definitely one, maybe two stunts where where it wasn't me, but it's off the bat. So I'm over the shoulder. So uh, but I was I remember telling Zach, I was like, look, anything you can legally allow me to do, just assume that I'm gonna want to do it. So yeah. <laughs> you know, I will I'll I that kind of stuff, you know, um I, I throw myself in the deep end. Also as a spectator, it's it's wonderful to stay with the actor, you know, and 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 know that they don't have to rely on cutting to some rudimentary shot of you so it looks like you, but it isn't you. It's it gives a lot more for the director to work with, the editor to work with, and also physically for me. If we can if we can have those four wall walls as rich as possible, you know, uh it, it makes our job easier. So it was uh he was very, very gracious with allowing me to do many things and potentially injuring myself many many times, but I got away reasonably unscathed. And you, do you feel like this project specifically for you was such a great launching pad because you have such a pivotal role to the narrative? I mean, look, we'll have to wait and see, Ryan. I mean, you know, the it's an interesting one, right? Because, you know, this show has, has done has done very well, very well uh, audience-wise. But, you know, critically, it's, you know, as, as most, if not all, Zack Snyder movies do, you know, have, has been pretty, pretty. They've pretty always been and pretty horrible to him, you know. And he, they, but the thing is, his fans always show up and for I, him. And and that's I mean, that's that's a point I was going to going to lead to. I mean, I, what what this was was an interesting learning curve. As this this you know, movies can exist in different worlds. The critically acclaimed role, the the audience, you know, you know, the the audience appreciated or the the you know the uh, audience acclaimed, let's just say, and and then the one that makes money. Yeah. And 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 this is and, and they they are they're three different entities, and and the only one we're in control of is 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 the work that we do. So, you know, I I I do believe it's going to be fantastic for my platform. I do think it's going to really help, and and there's no doubt this has given me a level of reach that I've never had before, and not just with with just working with such great actors and creatives like like Snyder and and, and the cast, but also. You know, working with a megalith like Netflix, you know, it's no doubt going to do that. But I, I think it's always best not to not to assume and just see where 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 things where things um, where things lay when things fall after after all of it. You know, um, all I they, can be in control, of, like I said, is the work. Yeah, they they seem to set it up for a sequel. Is that happening, perhaps? Or yeah, seem- I mean, look, they I know they've 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 got a whole world. I mean, Zach Zach. Zach wrote a Bible for for hundreds of years, wow. you know. So not as a hundred of human years, but yeah, like yeah. Fans. <laughs> yeah. You guys are gonna have Rebel Moon twenty five <laughs> in twenty seventy five. Yeah, no, no, no. It's uh, it's but in terms of the law, it is it goes back and goes forward a very long period of time. And I know if we have it our way, we'll we'll be doing this for for a, for a good few. I don't think we'd ever get to ten, but I think you know the the, the I think the story at least goes goes past past four or five let's say yeah um so let, let, let's let's see let's see let's let's see if we get to go there i i know i know you know i know a few things about three and four that i cannot share with you because i will get hey, is, wait did you guys in. shoot two but already? uh but I, or... yeah two's already done two, oh two i didn't like know that 19th, so, not mistaken. wow so part yeah. two is okay wow part two. and it's also, it's also, it's also let's let's clarify it's not two it is part two they are they are very you know because it uh, two implies a level of closure that um that I think really only for, not only but really gets gets achieved over over the two halves. You know, this is this is if if Snyder had it his way, probably I think we'd do it in one we'd do it in one foul swoop together. Wow. So it's it, it's good to remember it's good to remember that there's a reason why it's not called Rebel Moon One and Rebel Moon Two. It's Rebel Moon Part One and Part Two. They're two Thank halves you for of the, the same clarity. Point, I like to say. Wow. So how long yeah. did it take you guys to shoot both? Then we we did two months of of pre production, which involved all the physical stuff and and uh, the gym and, and and bringing together a kind of a fighting style and honing all the kind of the the, the stunt choreography, uh, and then seven and a half months of wow. filming, which is pretty good going for 180 pages, slanging it out, and seven and a half months. I think is pretty pretty impressive. 
Yeah, I would say so, especially given all the effects and yeah. you know, the action. That's not that's not easy. That must have been an incredible time. Do you do you feel like you really savored all that energy yeah. and all that? You know, it must have been so it's, intoxicating. It's hard, to, it's hard to savor it in the moment. It's hard to savor it in the moment. But I think looking back, I, I really understand more and more so how how what an amazing opportunity, what it, what a what a, just a crazy experience this was. You know, not just creatively, but to challenge myself physically. I mean, I, I was sitting at six seven maybe percent body fat which is which is a professional standard for seven eight months that's so like you know you usually you sit on that for the olympics or sit on it for for your shows and then you you go back to eating what you want and it was uh really and, and all of us did this by the way you know in, in in varying degrees and in different ways but everyone stuck to the stuck to the protocol and you know it was just i think as actors it's so much about so much about so much of what we love about this is challenging ourselves is is pushing ourselves is understanding ourselves understanding our limits understanding our vulnerabilities understanding our strengths weaknesses and uh it was a wonderful thing to really get to feel at the precipice of of of, of, of my career whilst also challenging myself physically in, in 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 such a way it was um yeah something i'll, I'll never forget you know it's um it I believe it's a tipping point, and but even if it isn't a tipping point in its sense, it's a tipping point for myself and my yeah, I'm thrilled my for my uh, yeah. You really, man. I mean, it, you you were incredible, and you know, do you have an idea of like you know, if you had pun intended the agency, what is it you would love to to really tackle next? If you haven't had the opportunity, you know, quite yet to to do something, would you like to? Yeah. What what's yeah. interesting to you yeah. right now? Um, what's interesting to me right now? I'm 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 currently um writing, creating a a, a TV show. We have a, we have a wonderful, I can't say who, but a wonderful studio on board and a wonderful production company on board, both of which have you know you may may or may not have heard of, but point is is we are we're pretty close to to selling a show that I've written with um with two of my close friends and creating with two of my close friends. It's uh imagine kind of Brooklyn nine nine meets Meets Ted Lasso, meets mm, I think like Twenty One Jump Street. Love that, but with two Indian, but with two Indian guys. Amazing. So, <laughs> and it's not a diversity meeting. We're not we're not here trying to shove diversity on anyone's throats. It's it's uh, it's just a fun way to create a fun a, a show with with familiar tropes, uh, but in a way that kind of makes uh, creates a safe space where no one is safe. Everyone and ev anyone is. Safe fair game i think in a in a in a in a, in a, in a generation that is sometimes afraid to to have fun you know uh at the cost at the way of offending people it's uh it's 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 a fun way to play around with that and also just give uh give voice to a lot of south indian and indian actors who you know who have always fallen under the stereotype of playing the scientist or playing the uh Playing the, the the cab driver or the you know or the comedic nerdy comedic relief you know we uh we've been the side dish and it's time to make us the main course and this is a really fun way to 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 do that so uh it's called the D team uh and uh, that's all I can say about it but hopefully within the next three to six months we will be uh we will be a green light and uh and next conversation we have I can tell you all about that but that's kind of my focus right now because you know what a what a dream to make your own work and not just that but make it with people you love. So uh that's kind of the next thing. Obviously Rebel Moon 2 comes out in three and a half months. Yeah. But uh and then the company what with I want to do. Paul, right? Yeah. I don't yeah. know when I, I, I don't know when Miramax is going to release that, but I'm really looking forward to it. Uh but that comedy with Paul, but you know, beyond the things that I'm already working on and things I have worked on, um if for me anything that challenges me, anything that 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 polarizes a role I've played before, anything that um allows me to have to really dig deep um love to keep doing more drama in terms of you know uh, the stuff that i feel not most comfortable the stuff that i enjoy the most it's 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 and, and, and i've kind of trained and studied the most is, is drama and so i'm i'm looking forward to to the you know the kind of the the roles that come come my way that are kind of of that of of of, of that type so my brain went blank there no, but uh yeah I, I think um I think uh, it's it, it's a double-edged sword, right? Because on one side, I, I think it's 
I, I think it's always good to remember to be a working actor as a lucky actor, you know, and I don't mean sell your soul and, and do shitty work. There've been jobs I turned down that were hyper misogynistic or just stupidly sexist or the art just didn't really revolve around anything other than being an asshole. There's no redemption. You know, I'm not saying to just take the paycheck, but I think there's a double-edged sword because on one side, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a two-sided thing, right? Because on one side, it's like, I really just, I would, I'm just grateful to be working. I will go back to what I said at the beginning. I, it's, uh, you know, statistically, I think we had this conversation. I think we had this conversation before we, we recorded, yeah. but, you know, there's 69 million actors on IMDb, right? And and so, and they roughly, to my knowledge, I won't keep breaking it down, but I think it's like if the top 15 to 50,000 actors work on a yearly basis or pay their bills with acting. You're looking at, to do that, you're looking at the top 0.01 or 0.1% of actors. Like, statistically speaking, that's ridiculous. You know, so I, I just, I, I think what I'm saying is I never lose sight of the fact that it is just, just a privilege to be working. Um, but uh, anything that challenges me. I'm curious, because I ask every actor this, and I know it's not an easy question to answer, but you've given such an amazing journey and how you've done this. And one of the things that I really appreciate about your story is that you, you started, you took a break and you picked it back up. And for a lot of my audience, you know, this, this journey is not always linear. It's not, you picked it up and you kept going until you worked. It's no. a lot of stop starts. No. And, you know, for all the actors listening out there, and I know this is a deep question, but any words of wisdom you might have? Yeah, um, I guess uh, the first thing I would say is remind yourself why you do it. I think uh, it's a very unforgiving industry. Make sure you love it because it doesn't always love you back. <laughs> um, and what I mean by that is find the things that... So before I say that, let me start by saying... Um, Find, find find ways to focus on your own personal journey versus comparing it to anyone else's. You, you know, Bruce Willis broke in his 30s, Morgan Freeman in his late 30s. You know, there's there's no, as you said, Ryan, there's no linear path to, to, to the industry. Focus on what you're in control of, which is the work you can do. And, and beyond that, also, before I go into this, yes, you know, find, 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 find ways to love it, but ways to have fun with it. It's important. Like I, I started auditioning. I started auditioning better when I started. Sorry. I started. Can you see me? Uh, it's, it's tough, but you got me? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 can you hear, make it work? Can you hear me? I can me? hear you. I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, man. Um, connect. God bless Portugal. But, uh, but, um, it has to stay fun. We have to stay fresh. We and 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 going in, going into that idea. The best thing I did was find find the things that make me happy and make me connect to life and keep me present with very because we all can you know we might goes but find the things that can keep it because you know when my job comes along you want to. Being prepared means constantly, constantly living, you know, and that doesn't have doesn't have to cost money. For me, it was, you know, and still is, you know, uh, oh God, how, is it mainly adults who listen to this, right? I, I would say it's a wide demo. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's not okay, children. Okay. Yeah. So for yeah. me, for me I'll, 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 yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take a couple bits up. But for me, it's sitting in the bath, listening to, listening to jazz music, listening to music. It, it's, it's taking a book and going into a crowded space and watching. It was... When I had the time, it was fostering pit bulls and fostering dogs. You know, it's reading, it's going out, it's experiencing, it's connecting to to, to life because that's the greatest source. We, we watch our idols all the time, but life is the greatest teacher. Life is the greatest instructor. What's more natural and more brilliant than watching real life occur versus watching the people we idolize re-perform real life, you know? So it's, it's, it's going out there and, and making yourself available and open to not just opportunity, but to, to life, to experience and in the simple ways. Um, I think that that makes us way more ready for when the right job comes along and gives us uh, far more to draw from. Yeah. So that's, that's, uh, and yeah. And, and most importantly, just make time for yourself. You know, this industry is super unforgiving and um, 
I wouldn't be here without the close people in my life, my wife, you know, I wouldn't, you know, so I, I have them to thank for, for me, for, you know, for getting me here along the road and making time for the personal things. Cause again, this informs personal informs the professional in our industry, you know, so even selfishly, that's not why you should make time for these things, but even selfishly for our craft, it, it informs all of that. So, um, yeah, that's it. That's that's what I would say. I don't know if that's a good answer. No, no, no. It's it's perfect. And and Staz, man, this was such a pleasure. And dude, I really, you know, if you're, if you're in New York, we should we should hang. And and I really hope we. Can I'd love that, man. Together. We'll 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 go out with the ladies. We'll go out for dinner together. We'll wax lyrical some more. You can you can you can show me around New York because I'm a newbie when it comes to that area. Yeah. But I'd love that. And thank you so much for your time and your questions, man. It's it's wonderful to sit and talk with a fellow thespian. Dude. And thank you for your patience. I know I ramble a lot, and but I no. appreciate your time, dude. Dude, so much love, brother, and uh, please come back exactly. when when the show when the next thing's in. Let's do it, man. Let's right. do it when D when D two is out. Let's have a conversation about some uh, about about where we're at. I wish you all the best to you and your family, man. Have a wonderful twenty twenty four. Same Thank to you, man. All right, much love. Later, brother. Big love, man. Peace. Thank you, man.